Welcome to Policy on Demand. I'm Cindy Bloom. For those of you looking for guidance related to the new Corporate Alternative Minimum Tax, or CAMPT, the IRS delivered Notice 2410 on Friday, December 15th. This notice follows multiple CAMPT related notices issued this year, and there also are proposed regulations to follow. So, what's in this guidance? I am so pleased to be joined by Nita Asher, a principal in PwC's International Tax Services Practice, to get some details. Nita, welcome. Thanks for having me. All right, let's get to it. So, what does this notice do? So, Cindy, notice 2024 10 provides additional interim guidance on two select issues. One, um, the determination of adjusted financial statement income of a U.S. shareholder when the CFC pays a dividend to the U.S. shareholder or to another CFC in the chain of ownership. The notice also modifies and clarifies certain guidance provided um, previously with respect to an adjusted financial statement of a corporation that's included on the consolidated tax return of um, the applicable corporation. I'm going to focus more on what's in Section 3 of the notice, and that's the um, treatment of distributions uh, from a CFC. And Cindy, stepping back a bit, um, there has been a concern pretty much since the enactment of PMD that you could have certain amounts taken into account multiple times when you have distributions um, from a CFC to a U.S. shareholder or to another CFC in the chain of ownership. And that's because there are multiple adjustments in the CAMT statute that could apply to the same um, financial statement income of a CFC. Um, clearly, that was also a concern of Congress because they directed Treasury in the CAMT statute to provide guidance dealing with the inappropriate duplication and also omission of financial statement income. And after several months, we finally have some guidance that um, companies can rely on to prevent the inappropriate duplication of CFC income. And the way the notice is doing it is, is, is quite interesting and I believe welcomed in that they're taking a approach that applies general tax principles and not some you know, new concept of what constitutes dividend in the CAMD context or a you know, highly complicated new CAMD PTAP regime. Instead, what they're doing is they're defining what constitutes a covered CFC distribution for purposes of CAMD. And once again, they're just looking at general tax principles and, and utilizing that same dividend concept in the CAMD context. And they're also looking to um, exclusions in the general tax um, space, such as uh, distributions of previously taxed income under Section 50, 959, and applying those principles in the CAMD context as well. And then the notice is basically providing rules with respect to upper tier distributions of these covered CFC distributions. And those are distributions from a CFC to a U.S. shareholder. And basically saying you do not have to take those distributions into account. Um, again, if they are eligible for an exclusion under 959, for example, or eligible for a deduction under 245 Cap A, which is the new DRD regime that was enacted as part of TCJA, or another deduction under, say, Section 243 or 245. And so that's how they're dealing with the treatment of upper tier covered CFC distributions. Section 3 of the notice also provides rules with respect to lower CFC distributions, but again, applying general tax principles instead of new principles, which is a welcomed approach. Um, what's interesting here, though, is that even though you get to look at certain exceptions, um, such as exceptions in 954C with respect to CFC look-through or the same country exception in determining the amount that's included, there isn't um, a deduction, if you will, with respect to CFC level um, DRDs or, or deductions that are taken into account. And so that that is 
the approach right now set forth in the notice with respect to lower tier um, distributions. And so we have to see if, if maybe future guidance will also apply um, these approaches with certain changes or if Treasury and IRS may look to other ways to manage um, the duplication of CFC income. So talk about some effective dates related to this guidance. What do we need to pay attention to? The operative rules set forth in Section 3 and Section 4 um, basically apply to the 2023 calendar year and also 2024 up until we receive proposed regulations. And so those are the important effective dates that um, companies to, should look at when relying on um, the, the notice. Okay, and finally, the big question, what are some next steps for companies? Companies, one, should keep their eye out for um, additional guidance. We're, we're reading in the tax press and hearing that hopefully pr proposed regulations will be released early next year. In the meantime, the um, the comment period for notice 2024-10 is up until January 15th. And while we do have the upcoming holidays to look forward to, companies should think about commenting on notice 2024-10 prior to January 15th, just to help the process with respect to um, these important issues. Nita, first of all, thank you for taking the time, but also thank you for acknowledging the holidays. I think a lot of people are going to be thinking about a lot of things over the holidays this year. Thank you. Well, thank you for having me. And it is true that there is always more to talk about, especially right now in the policy world. There will be an insight on the CAMPTI notice included in the description of this episode, along with an episode about the recent foreign tax credit notice. Thank you, as always, for spending this time with us. Take care.